Hi YouTube! E3 basically starts tomorrow. I can't articulate how I feel about E3. E3 is... Uh, so my usual E3 video is more along the lines of what's happening, what's gonna happen, what already happened, but this time around I wanted to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about what it's actually like to go to E3 and how that's different from staying at home and watching it because it's it's a 100% different experience and I know every gamer wants to go to E3 at least once and I'm not trying to shatter those dreams. I think E3 is great. But going to E3 or staying home for all of the E3 announcements both have their benefits and both have their drawbacks. So I've been to E3 once. I went in 2016 which was the year when all of the Breath of the Wild stuff was announced and shown. I've been invited in 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018 so far by Nintendo, and that was the only year I've gone just due to different time commitments, money issues, and stuff like that. This year I couldn't go because I was traveling a lot for something else in the beginning of the month and it was just too much time to take off, but truthfully if there wasn't so much traveling happening I probably would have tried to go to E3 again this year. So first, a quick introduction. E3 is the Electronic Entertainment Expo, if you haven't heard of it. It's run by the ESA. It's it's basically a trade show for video games where all of the big stuff is announced. All of the major companies do these huge shows or announcement videos or uh, have huge booths. There are video game announcements throughout the year at other shows, but E3 is the big one where all of the big news comes from. It's fluctuated between being more of a public event versus more of a media event back to more of a public event. As of last year, it is open to the public. It costs uh, $250 or $150 if you're one of the first thousand people to register. Even if you're just a video game fan, not a media person, not a YouTuber, not a blogger, you pay enough money, you can get in, no problem. So like I said, I have been to E3. I'm going to show some video here from when I attended in 2016. Basically what you get with your badge for E3 is access to the expo floor, which has all of the companies um, vying for your attention. There's swag, there's video game demos all over the place, there's some cool experiences like videos or little theaters. Unsurprisingly, the popular games have massively long lines. When I went for Breath of the Wild, we were actually told that the wait was five hours long. We only ended up waiting two hours. We were immediately in that line when those doors opened and it was still a two hour wait. So keep the line situation in mind. So the pros to attending E3 is that there are a lot of custom demos that you won't be able to play anywhere else. You have first access to playing them. It's awesome. There's great swag, a lot of stuff that you can't get anywhere else. T-shirts, coins, pins, stuff that ends up on eBay for 50 to hundreds of dollars. You get it for free as long as you're diligent and keep your eyes out for it. E3 is also amazing for networking. If you do anything in the game industry, if you do YouTube vlogging, if you're an aspiring developer, if you're just interested in breaking into the game industry, everyone there is connected in some way and so talking to people and meeting them and and getting your hands dirty and maybe not dirty but and the energy inside e3 is awesome you know everyone's excited the hype is up there everyone is talking about what they just saw and how amazing it was E3 is a fun place to be. This wasn't really the case when I went, but now there are some awesome panels that you can go to, some industry people, people who aren't even in the industry. Like this year, there's a Westworld panel talking about how video games inspired Westworld. The downside to actually attending E3 are two things. Basically, one, time. It's incredibly time consuming to do anything. And not just the amount of time, but the timing of everything at E3 is really difficult to keep up with. So basically E3 is three days long. It's a trade show. During those three days, the expo hall is open. People are flooded in. They're playing the games. But all of the announcements happen the morning of in the three days or four days before the expo actually opens. And it just so happens all of those days are usually the travel days for getting to E3. So if you don't live in the LA area, the only way to get to E3 is of course to travel to it. And which day are you going to choose to travel if you need to cover announcements that are happening the four days prior to the actual expo? So that's something to keep in mind. If you're traveling to E3 and you are doing any kind of a coverage or need to follow the game announcements, there's a good chance you're going to be on an airplane or somewhere without Wi-Fi when those announcements are actually made. Oh, but let's say that you went in ahead of time so that you got to watch the announcements from your hotel room. 
that's also kind of an issue because it's really hard to find a hotel these days that has really good usable Wi-Fi for streaming videos. It's certainly not impossible, but the vast majority of hotels that tout their Wi-Fi don't have Wi-Fi that's great for watching videos. The first time we saw that first Zelda Breath of the Wild trailer in 2016, I saw it on like the crappiest quality, buffering, awful internet video on the internet. I'm talking about Nintendo right now, which is always a video, but there's also Sony, Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, etc. All of these companies that do stage shows at E3. It's important to note that just because you have access to E3 does not mean you have access to those stage shows. Those particular shows are by invite only and they're for press. So just because you have an E3 badge does not mean that you get to go watch those. I tried really hard to get an invitation to the Sony one when I was there because I happened to be there in time for it and I could not get in. So regardless of whether you're at E3 or sitting comfortably at home, keep in mind that you're probably going to be watching those, those videos, those press conferences live on the internet in the exact same way. I know this doesn't matter to everyone, but it matters to me, so I'll also add in that going to E3 is super expensive. Even if you've already gotten your badge for free somehow, the hotels in the area are insanely expensive and even Airbnbs and stuff like that are not cheap in the LA area. You need to try and get like a good big group of people to go to share a hotel room with or something because it is rough. I'm on the East Coast so the flight to get over there is also not cheap. I just know that I spent a small fortune going the one year that I went, even with the free badges. So the benefits to actually staying at home are really there. When you're watching from home, you have a better view, better access, better audio, all of the above to all of the press conferences than you would if you were sitting in the auditorium. And that's even if you have access to the auditorium for the stage shows. The trailers and video get plugged right into the stream so you get them taking up the full screen. The people who are in that auditorium are seeing it on a screen in front of them. It's not the same experience. I've been to those kinds of press conferences. They're neat, but they're not the same. You're not fighting over the Wi-Fi with a bunch of other people so there's less of a chance that your phone's gonna go bad or your Wi-Fi or any of the above. You can live tweet to your heart's content without your data crashing for any reason. Also, you'll save a lot of money by not going. So there's that, always a good thing. You do miss out on all of the demos. You don't get to get the hands-on experience with a lot of the stuff. But in a lot of instances, I personally don't think that it's 100% necessary to play a demo to really get the gist of it. You can see videos of every demo imaginable on the internet after E3 happens or during E3. So long story short, I'm certainly not trying to talk anybody out of wanting to go to E3. E3 is awesome. It's the kind of thing I think everyone should try at least once to get to, but you really should not feel bad about not going to E3 because the experience that you can get E3-wise from sitting at home and watching on your butt in your pajamas, it's a little bit better. So this year at E3, I will be watching in my home, in my living room, with my pajama pants on. I absolutely cannot wait. E3 kicks off tomorrow with the EA press conference. Might be today by the time I get this uploaded. I'll put the full schedule of E3 events down below so you know what's upcoming and you know when you can sit in your living room and watch it. But hey, let me know down below if you're going to E3 or if you've been and what did you think? Do you think it's worth it to go all the time or is it really a better experience to be there versus at home? I think the short of it for me is that it's more of an awesome networking and industry event than it is a great way to actually experience all of the new stuff. And the next time I go, if I get to go again in the future, I'm going to look at it as more of an opportunity to work with other YouTubers and other video game bloggers and stuff like that. That's all for now. We're gonna go get ready for E3. Love you.